mental illness is real. It can affect anyone. It can affect any neighborhood. It doesn't matter. Mental illness doesn't have a zip code or an address. Carmela Arlene Pitchin was celebrated as the ultimate embodiment of virtue and compassion in the eyes of her family, who saw her as the living example of an exemplary daughter, sister, niece, cousin, friend, aunt, wife, mother, co-worker, neighbor, and even as someone who generously extended her kindness to strangers she encountered, a true angel in our midst. Little did they know that a dark and sinister fate awaited her, as she would ultimately meet a gruesome end at the hands of someone she had brought into this world, in a manner too horrifying to contemplate. Welcome to the American Crime Femicide Channel. Please like, subscribe, share, and hit the notification bell for future uploads. Carmela, the youngest of 15 siblings and the seventh daughter, was renowned for her captivating green eyes and a heart overflowing with warmth and generosity. Her upbringing took place in the Pleasantville neighborhood of Houston, Texas. During the 1990s, Carmela pursued her education at the University of Houston's downtown campus, culminating in her graduation in 1991 with a Bachelor of Science in Business and Commerce, with a major in Accounting. In that era, Carmela's life took a profound turn as she fell head over heels in love with David Pitchin. Their union brought forth two sons, David Pitchin Jr. and Nicholas Pitchin. Together, Carmela and their children's father showered them with boundless love and catered to their every need. However, as the years passed, David Jr. exhibited increasingly erratic and aggressive behavior, distancing himself from others and becoming a solitary figure. Their household became a frequent destination for law enforcement due to mental health concerns related to David's unsettling and alarming conduct. While David's anger and volatility were deeply unsettling, no one could have fathomed that it would escalate to the point of murder. September 7, 2023 marked a harrowing evening, forever etched in the annals of dread. Inside her home, a woman was jolted by the thunderous banging on her door. Trembling, she swung it open to reveal a ghastly tableau. Her neighbor, Carmela, was drenched in a grotesque shroud of blood, shrieking in frantic desperation for her to summon the police. As terror surged through the now panic-stricken neighbor, her desperate cries for help reverberated in the air. In that nightmarish moment, she witnessed the chilling presence of David, clutching a malevolent knife, his intent chillingly apparent. With a malevolent turn, he retreated to his home. When the paramedics finally arrived, their arrival did little to dispel the pervasive darkness that had descended upon the scene. Despite their best efforts, they were powerless to resurrect Carmela. She lay lifeless, a tragic victim of unspeakable violence. Suspect said to be in his late 20s is accused of stabbing his mother multiple times. All of this happening at their home on Havana Glen near West Airport Boulevard at around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. KPRC 2's Devin Clark spoke with a neighbor who said she did everything she could to save her, but it was too late. The woman you're about to hear from asked not to be identified out of respect for the family, but she recalled the frantic moments. She says her neighbor ran from this house next door to her house, desperately begging for help. It's just a day that no one expected. And it's just, it's hard. What's been described as a usually quiet, close-knit community on Havana Glen in Sugarland has been rocked by a brutal and deadly stabbing. Helicopters and and cops and police all across the place, it was really uh, jarring to me. Sugarland police say a man in his 20s stabbed his mother multiple times. We heard someone saying, help, help, help. At first, the victim's next-door neighbor says she thought it may have been children playing until she opened the door. I see my neighbor coming towards me saying, help me, help me. My son stabbed me. And I ran back in, told my daughter to call 911. And I came out and I, I saw it and I said, come, please, please come. She says the woman's son accused of the stabbing wasn't far behind. Maybe 10 feet behind her. And honestly, when he saw me, he stopped. He literally stopped 
and I looked at him dead in his face. Now she says she realized she could have been attacked as well. But in that moment, all she could do was think to help the woman who had lived next door for 15 years. The 911 operator walked me through what to do because her, her shirt was saturated. And the police got here like within four minutes. The woman was taken to the hospital but did not survive. Neighbors now reflecting on her spirit. Very, very friendly. And her son, who some believe may have suffered from mental illness. The boy is quiet. He's not talking. No. He's He's not talking. Mental illness is real. It can affect anyone. It can affect any neighborhood. It doesn't matter. Mental illness doesn't have a zip code or an address. Police say after the stabbing, the victim's son drove himself to the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office and turned himself in. Right now, charges against him are pending. Yeah, as of last update, the 27-year-old was here at the police station being questioned by detectives. Police say he turned himself in only one hour after stabbing his mother. These images from Air 11 above this Sugar Land neighborhood shows the crime scene as officers try to piece together what happened. At 2.30 this afternoon, a neighbor called 911 telling them 55-year-old Carmela Pichon came to their home looking for help. She'd been stabbed multiple times. Paramedics and police responded and the woman was given CPR, but it was too late. Carmela Pichon died at the scene. One hour later at 3.30, the woman's 27-year-old son, David Pichon Jr., showed up at the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office to turn himself in. He is now charged with murder. Sugarland police say the mother and son both lived in the home together. Now, police have not shared a possible motive for the stabbing. They do say that officers made multiple calls to service, mental health-related calls to service to the home in the past. However, they did not share the details of those calls. David Pitchin Jr. faces murder charges, with a potential life sentence looming over him. Carmela was laid to rest on September 23rd, her abrupt passing prompting an outpouring of sorrow on social media. November 11th would have marked her 56th birthday, now a bittersweet reminder of her absence. In their time of mourning, please keep Carmela's family and friends in your prayers. She was dearly cherished and will be deeply missed. Rest in peace, Carmela Arlene Pitchin.